an awesome parade, a traditional Norwegian Bunad fashion show, and the ultimate Norseman rock throwing and Ludafisk eating contest. <laughs> cannot miss the Norwegian folk dancing. And we are at Nordic Fest, Decorah, Iowa. We arrived just before 10 a.m. for the parade. There's already found a cat. His name is Lucky, according to the collar. It says, I live near the school playground, and I love people, and I'll go home on my own. So. <laughs> we set up at the corner of Water and Winnebago, which I highly recommend because the announcers were nearby and they were absolutely hilarious. This eighty-member male chorus has sung for the King of Norway on several occasions. In 1993, they performed for King Harold in the Royal Palace of Oslo. Decora has become a center for Norwegian American culture in the U.S., originating from a high number of Norwegian settlements in the 1850s. And this is the Laura Ingalls Wilder float. I visited the Laura Ingalls Wilder historical homes in Desmet, Dakota, so click above if you'd like to see that video. Each puppet represents a Norse god or goddess. Odin, Freya, Suna, which means sun, Erta, which is earth, and the fire giant are just a few examples. Do you recognize them? I'm very afraid. They're very large. The newest puppet is Rainbow D. D is the Norwegian word for they. Rainbow D was made to celebrate all the colors of our world. Rainbow D is holding court on a high float. The puppet answers and of course the trout wish you a wild and wonderful Nordic fest. Even the taxis are gnomes. Pulling a circus wagon. It's called a calliope. It runs off steam. That's quite an engine there that you're seeing, folks. There's only two of them, if you didn't hear that, just two of them in the United States of America. And they renovated this one just up the road near the North British School. Sure is pretty. That's Rachel Scarley of Spring Grove, the organ player. Guys, the, 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 the Northeast Iowa Shrine Motor Clouds, they're out, they're out of control. I mean, they're out of control. <laughs> Where are they? Santa Claus. What's going on? Save me. All directions point north, huh? It was absolutely wonderful to see such a great group of people out enjoying the day in small town Iowa. And of course, a small town Iowa parade would not be complete without some tractors. The parade got over at noon and we were hungry, so we went and searched for some food. Varma pulsa is a Norwegian sausage wrapped in lefse, which is a type of flatbread, and the line was long. Mabe's Pizza is one of the local favorites. So you can get meatballs in a boat on a stick or you can get them in a bun. And these are four dollars each. Delicious. And this was the line for Lefsa. This is my mother-in-law Beth and she's of Norwegian descent. She was the first person to introduce me to Norwegian pastries. Yeah. I don't know what's what. This is, these are rosettes. This is krumkak or strudel, I called it. These are sunbuckles, and those are more kringle. Of course, one of the best parts of festivals is the festival food. But you don't always find food demonstrations, so I was very excited to learn how to make krumkaka. 
They also had a gluten-free recipe and this hundred-year-old press on display. Never in my life before had I ever seen lingonberry ice cream, so I just had to try some. All right! <laughs> Thank you! It was really similar to strawberry, but not quite as sweet. Coming up! <laughs> Men and women compete in the ultimate Norseman competition, including rock throwing and eating super stinky fish. We talk to some Vikings, and we check out a couple more local favorites. There were some musical acts scheduled throughout the day on three different stages. The Vesterheim Norwegian American Museum and Folk Art School is open year-round, and you can learn things like hardanger embroidery or rose mauling painting. Fun fact, Vesterheim means Western home in Norwegian. So we're here at the rock throwing contest and on the schedule it says it's supposed to be from 1 to 3. So we got here a little after 1. It is now 1.30 and the event hasn't started yet. They're still doing registration. So when you come to Norfest just know you can pretty much skip the first half hour. Everybody is here waiting. There are three different weight classes, so the heavier you are, the heavier rock that you throw. There's also a women's class. 23, five. The rocks weigh between 50 and 100 pounds. So everybody gets two throws. If you touch the log, or the rock rolls outside the pennant, you get disqualified. The trick seemed to be to get it to roll as much as possible. Oh, oh, oh. 30 feet 11. Take the lead now. The 210. We may have a winner here. That was a nice roll. New first place, anyway. Thirty-nine three. We'll take the lead. Ludofisk is dried and salted cod, pickled in lye. In Norwegian culture, it is normally served during the Christmas feast. Why you would want to ruin your Christmas? I have no idea. Ludafisk really stinks, so make sure you check the wind direction before you choose your seat. For the eating contest, the only condiments that the contestants get are butter, salt, and pepper. Before we get started, we do this the Norwegian way. Viking way. Something. Skull. 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 To prove that they've eaten it all, the contestants have to put the bowl on top of their head. Hotel, and we're about to watch the Bunad uh, folk costume show. The music that you hear in the background is being played on this beautiful hand carved instrument and includes various folk songs from all over Norway. This head covering is reprinted on the scroll of the Ardonaku. This is constructed with a white linen towels that's embroidered with black and stretched over a wooden framework to give it its particular shape. 
This is the cottage design for children and folk dancers. The colors, embroidery, and style changes from region to region. Here's a list of just a few of them. This particular one is called the Erzgubluna. It has a second name also. It's called the Markaluna. She was the crown princess of Norway during World War II. It was given to her in 1929 as a wedding present when she married Prince Olaf. Now, uh, the niece's cap and her purse are silk, and they are embroidered with beautiful pink roses. Mine just happened to be from the mid-1800s. Oh, I see. She's got Many of these bunads are passed down through the family. This particular one has been worn by three or four generations. I don't know if it's just a Midwestern thing, but having a dress with pockets is very exciting. Both of these dresses have an opening right in the front, and that was for a watch that would hang on a chain. And this lady has a special bunad knife. This particular bunad is non-region specific. Container for the room of the bed is secured with more of the box. What is that called? Umbar. 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 And then it's ascending band. And instead of having a pattern from your village, like goes around the waist, the sending band is unique. And this is the only creative thing you could do. And when you send the container, you will get it back because of the, the band pattern. So it's sort of like putting fingernail polish on a cake pan that you take with <laughs> For this one, she has a red jacket and also a wide woven belt that is wrapped around her waist twice. Next we headed to the Viking encampment. Sadly, we didn't make it in time to see the battle demonstration, but we did get to learn a little bit about their weapons. So the most basic of the weapons would be the sex. Uh, which is a knife anywhere from short to really long uh, that any free Norwegian or Scandinavian would have and carry and use for uh, work on the farm, around the house, uh, cut, cutting and eating food. Um, it was the mark of a, of a free person. Again, very useful around the farm, around the house, uh, cut wood, uh, but also very effective in battle and combat as well. Um, and this one is specifically really good for fighting because uh, uh, this little bit here, you could grab behind the hooded shield and pull their shield away, exposing them to either then you strike them or someone else will strike them. We headed to Tea Box for dinner, which is another local favorite. And I tried cider from Convergence, which is just around the corner. And it was really good. They serve your typical bar and grill fare. And their potato salad is really good. We are at Impact Coffee. And they have a Lessa Latte. Which I'm told tastes exactly like a Lefsa with cinnamon, sugar, and butter. As well as some music events. One of the biggest events at Nordic Fest is the Nordic Dancers. Due to the length of many of these folk dances, I'm only going to put a few short clips here. However, if you would like to watch the full dances, I will put those in a separate video and you can click on the link above. This particular dance was just called the Grand Entrance. This is the double quadrille.
here we see the ancient ritual of men trying to impress a woman. This time by trying to kick a hat off a broomstick as high as possible, or as creatively as possible. Hey, and a catch, and a bow. Strapper, oh, oh, a lot of confidence. <laughs> oh my goodness, nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> I think they just had the time of their lives. This one was called the Rugen and featured some of their younger dancers. This dance tells the story of the art of weaving. And let's see, they're looking out for the sheep, searching for the sheep. This was by far my favorite dance. Here we have them washing the wool. And threading the loom. The shuttles are passing back and forth as they go through the weaving process. This is the Fermata dance and was definitely a crowd favorite. We'll get every other couple here flying first. Nice and strong, the girls' legs, there they go. Ladies up and in, guys think strong, here we go. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. If you like this video and you'd like to see more content about fun things to do and festivals in Iowa and around the Midwest, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a good one.